In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Brad Pitt has owned multiple luxury homes over the years, but his home base has always been his Los Angeles compound. He purchased the Craftsman style home off of Elvira actress Cassandra Peterson in 1994 for $1.7 million. The property, dubbed Briarcliff Manor, has also been said to be haunted. Over the years, Brad has added onto the historic estate, purchasing surrounding properties and creating his own private compound. The entire area is now said to span over 80,000 square feet. Brad Pitt is an A-list actor and film producer who's received a number of accolades and awards over his Hollywood career. He starred in a ton of movies, but his first leading roles in big budget productions came with A River Runs Through It, Legends of the Fall, and Interview with the Vampire. As a public figure, Brad has been dubbed one of the most powerful and influential individuals in the American entertainment industry. And at the time of this recording, he's amassed an estimated net worth of $300 million. While Brad has owned stunning homes from Los Angeles to across the pond in France, he's stayed put at his main home since the early 90s, just expanded it. Hey guys, it's Kara, back with another exclusive house tour here in Famous Entertainment. And in this one, we're seeing where Brad Pitt calls home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit me up on Instagram to chat. Now let's get into this video. Let's begin with Brad's focal property, or what I would call his dream home, his compound in LA. His estate is located in Los Feliz, which is a trendy neighborhood that attracts both established types and creative up-and-comers. It's a hillside enclave that borders the massive Griffith Park, close to both the famed Griffith Observatory and the Greek Theater. Over the decades, Brad has created a private paradise for himself and his family by buying up surrounding properties to his original one and expanding it immensely. He bought the first home back in 1994, hot off his new success, which was only just beginning, for a modest $1.7 million off of Elvira star Cassandra Peterson, which is actually a pretty interesting story in itself, and I was able to read that in Elvira's autobiography. The home, dubbed Briarcliff Manor, is a historic, craftsman-style estate and is no doubt beautiful. Miss Peterson details that she had lived in the manor for some time and was coming to love it, not planning on moving out anytime soon either, as she was expecting and pregnant with her daughter. Brad first appeared in Miss Peterson's life while auditioning for a role in the Elvira Mistress of the Dark movie, though she recalled him being far too attractive for the part. She then got a random call from him about her home in the Hollywood Hills, after he got her number from Nicolas Cage. While Cassandra didn't want to sell her property anymore, Brad was persistent and ended up convincing her to sell to him. Miss Peterson, funnily enough, moved onto the same block and right next door to Brad some years later. While Peterson details a few spooky situations at the home she sold to Pitt in the book, she's not sure whether the haunted happenings continued after she moved out, but more on that in just a moment. Either way, it's clear that Brad was the right man to purchase the home, and Miss Peterson thinks that too. Briarcliff Manor was built back in 1910 for an oil baron, so it's quite vintage. The main house boasts over 5,300 square feet of space, with six beds and seven bathrooms. Since Brad snagged this house, he spent the following two decades collecting neighboring properties to add to the compound. Not to mention, he's done a lot of work to the main house to make it more family friendly too. I mean, he does have six kids, so I think that was kind of necessary. Adding on more properties also gave Brad more privacy and space for the kids to play. His compounds currently consists of five attached properties and four of the buildings have been completely remodeled since he bought the place. In total, the spread now covers 80,000 square feet of space. Some of the smaller houses around the main house include a home that was rebuilt over a decade after purchase, a house for the nanny, a building that's used as a huge kids area, a vacant land with a discreet two bedroom cottage, and more. Brad's vision was to create a free-flowing compound that suited the original craftsman homes in the area, dating back to 1915. It's a dream home made for both work and play, considering his main house also doubles as a space for his Plan B production company, located on the upper level. In the late 90s, a few years after his initial purchase, Brad went on to buy house number two, a smaller one for 380 k located at the rear of the land. This structure spans almost 2,500 square feet. 
He then added on another house, costing 475k, which spanned just over 1,600 square feet. Later on, when Brad and Angelina Jolie were still together, another addition was made in 2008 for 1.28 million dollars, even though it was a humble 1,500 square foot abode. The following year, the former couple spent 1.1 million on a huge barn-like structure, which now reportedly has a secret cave and its own bar. This made it possible to make one building a huge playroom for the kids, also doubling as a living quarters and den for the grown-ups. The completely secluded compound has a bunch of exciting stuff outside too. There are three swimming pools and plenty of terraces and patios to soak up the sun. Further amenities include a tennis court and a large skate park that goes around a portion of the property. Since Brad's divorce, he's added even more fun stuff for the kids. Aerial shots reveal water slides, swings, pool toys, a treehouse, and even a bouncy castle. It seems like the family compound is more like an amusement park these days. Back in 2013, Brad told Esquire that it can get noisy at home, but he loved it, admitting, I always thought that if I wanted to do a family, I wanted to do it big. I wanted there to be chaos in the house. There's a constant chatter in our house, whether it's giggling or screaming or crying or banging. I love it. I love it. I love it. I hate it when they're gone. While the Fight Club star is almost always private about his home life and his house, he somewhat recently gave fans a glimpse inside his huge garden at the property in a video posted to graduates from Missouri State University. Brad was a student there before leaving to pursue his career as an actor and wanted to make sure students leaving during these uncertain times felt inspired. In the footage, he said, Hi everyone, Brad here from quarantine with a shout out to the graduating class of Missouri State University. It must be very strange during these trying times, but no, we're rooting for you. Our money's on you to make this world a better place. We could see Brad outside of neatly lined hedges and greenery looking happy and relaxed. On another note, the former owner Elvira or Cassandra Peterson claimed that Briarcliff Manor may actually be haunted. We don't know if Brad has had any incidents in his decades living here. While Cassandra did, there were some spooky happenings. She reveals, I have a chapter in my book about this house I lived in called Briarcliff Manor. My ex-husband and I moved in and weird stuff started happening. She continued, I mean, first thing I was unpacking boxes in the second floor and I told the movers not to take anything to the third floor because I didn't know what we were going to do with that room. So I'm unpacking boxes and I hear these footsteps across the ceiling. I look up and I could actually see vibrations as this person walked across the room. I go running up the stairs and say, hey, I told you guys not to and I'm stopped in my tracks. I see there's nobody up there. There was nowhere to hide up there. It was just one big empty room. As time went on, more and more things kept happening. This included seeing ghosts two times very, very clearly. I was talking to the damn things like they were real people and then they just kind of vanished before my eyes. Things went on and on there. I got to the point where I said, I got to get out of here. I can't deal with this anymore. We got a Native American shaman to come in and save the house and clear it. While his compound haunted or not is more than enough for Brad, he also reportedly owns a contemporary retreat in the Hollywood Hills. The star has expressed a passion for architecture and he had a hand in designing this custom home. Brad worked with Graft, a trio of young architects, on the dramatic yet tranquil house, built much in the style of Californian desert modernism. The aim, according to the Graf team, was to create a clean, well-functioning and flexible space, also with a harmonious atmosphere. They used mica stone for all the walls, floors and ceilings because it brightens things up and for contrast, it was mixed with pine floors. The zen-like home boasts hidden shelves and nooks built into many of the walls, the intention of keeping each room free of clutter and minimalistic. Impressive wood beams and skylights line the ceiling along the bathroom over the enclosed glass shower. Brad's house in the Hollywood Hills might look more like a bachelor pad than a home for his big family, but his solo sanctuary is one that shouldn't be overlooked. All right, so now we've checked out a couple of Brad Pitt's properties, especially his main compound in Los Feliz, which he started building with Barcliff Manor. What did you guys think? I wish we could see more of his main home's interiors, that's for sure. But based on what we know about the original home, it's certainly impressive. Be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.